Hello and welcome to Vox Markets. I am John Human, and I'm delighted to be joined today by Chris Von Jacko, Chief Executive of Polarian, to talk about your recent strategy update. How are you doing, Chris? Great, thanks. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. No, great, great to have you on. Um, so it's been a very, very busy time since you joined uh, last June, I think it was. Um, real progress on the regulatory and commercial front, and it provides a, a, an enormously solid foundation for the next phase of growth for Polarian that you've outlined in today's strategy update. Talk through what's been going on over the last six months ago before we come on to, to the details of, of what you've, you've talked about. Yeah, great, okay, great. Thanks for the question. I really appreciate it. So yeah, I joined at the end of June, and then about six months ago, I say we we uh, outlined five pillars uh, that the company was going to focus on to drive long term uh, value creation, um, and we've had some really strong and I would say steady uh, progress in each of the areas. So I'll just kind of outline at a high level each of the five. So the first was driving utilization; it's essentially key for the business, right? We had our first two conversions of research centers with uh, Cincinnati Children's and University of Missouri. And driving this clinical utilization was a new process for them as well as for as well as for Polarian. Thus, but uh, so it was a little bit slower, I think, in the beginning, in large part due to the centers getting comfortable with the overall process and going clinical. Um, but in recent months, uh, we've picked up steam and and with the drive to get them. You know, somewhere between the three to four scans per week. Um, this is really, I would say, been an invaluable process of understanding, you know, how we will uh, better scale the business going forward. The second thing is on growing the user base, right? Uh, we did make an announcement in December of our first de novo site, which means it was our first academic medical center outside of our current research uh, centers. So that was great news. And then we uh, broadened the reimbursement coverage, right, as our third pillar, really around reimbursement. Uh, which is so key in a technology like ours. Uh, we received the new code, and that new code ended up yielding a, a total of about $1,300 uh, for Medicare reimbursement, which I think we've stated before in the past. Medicare is that safety net uh, for uh, for older adults, 65 and older, which is great. That's sort of a first process that you do when you're going through the reimbursement process in the U.S., and, you know, that combined with the existing codes um, really yields positive procedural economics for the medical centers uh, with about, if they're doing about three scans per week, which is great. The fourth pillar is expanding our total addressable market, right? And we're key on that. And uh, I would say we're on track. There's two specific areas there. We're on track to make it a submission to the FDA in late July to expand our current labeling minimum age from 12 years old down to six. And we believe this process could take after we make the submission somewhere between six to nine months. Likewise, we continue to refine our plans around uh, uh, following our FDA meeting that we had uh, back in October for a future trial to expand the market to what we call gas exchange. And then the last thing uh, is really on partnerships. And I think uh, we've done a lot around that. Obviously, our first relationship with uh, Philips, and we continue to expand that and uh, look at other potential uh, value creation partnerships. Yeah. So you, you have really been very, very busy in uh, in your first six, six or seven or eight months <laughs> in the job. Yeah. Extra, extraordinary progress. Um, I mean, Chris, you, you talked about, you know, get it, getting uh, physicians comfortable. With, with using what is a is a new new approach a new technology um but you've got a lot of experience in the medical device industry talk, talk us about about your experience and how you're bringing that to bear at polarium and overcoming overcoming the challenges and there are enormous challenges of bringing a, a technology to this such as uh, to the market yeah john without a doubt um so yeah i've been in i've been uh, doing this for 30 years you know bringing new and uh important life-changing medical technologies to the market I'd say earlier in my career, I had a lot of success. And, and through that success, I actually sold five companies. And I believe today I'm even more experienced now that I've also experienced some challenges along the way as I took on more complex roles where I've discovered that the product maybe just didn't work like, like we intended or didn't have alignment maybe within the board on, on the correct vision. But that's totally not the case within Polarian. And uh, I now, uh, you know, the benefits, um, I benefit from basically the adversities that I had. And while each of the experiences have been slightly different, there are more important benefits that I see pretty clearly with Polarian today. So 
Um, we have a revolutionizing imaging product with a lot of science and clinical data behind it. That is huge. We have a very large unmet uh, need in uh, lung imaging with our first indication, uh, where what we do is we measure and visualize lung ventilation, or basically it's where the air goes and doesn't go within the lungs, and we can see that. Uh, and an enormous market potential uh, with our future expansion into measuring and visualizing how uh, that oxygen or air exchanges from the lungs into the bloodstream. Um, both uh, the first one, ventilation, which is our first approval, and gas exchange are vital functions of the lung. And the many physicians we speak with automatically see, literally see, uh, the benefits. The business model with Polarian System, I would say, uh, is, is really uh, not new to me uh, with our capital component. Uh, with the benefit of having our combined recurring revenue of our ga gas blend, right, with each imaging exam. So both of those components are, are really important and are supported, as I mentioned earlier, um, which, which is unique to me is that in this early days, they're supported by excellent positive procedural economics for the hospitals, which is great with our reimbursement. You know, this being the case, I say we still need to go through the normal course of uh, blocking and tackling. I'm sorry, that's an American football reference, um, but basically the fundamental process of bringing new technologies uh, to the market and developing the market. And of course, things take a little longer than anyone wants, but I would say I'm extremely happy and confident with our current progress. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you've got the experience to, uh, to, to as you say, the experience to get through that, that um the, the, the challenges that, that, as you say, these these, these technologies face. Um, let, let's talk about the technology, the Xenoview technology, in more detail, uh, and the opportunity in detail as well. Um, you know, it has the potential to be, to be a game changer, as you say, for, for unmet diagnostic needs, and there's lots more uh, development potential uh, to grow the addressable market. Let's let, perhaps talk about the, the technology in action. I mean, you know, that that's obviously the uh, the proof of the pudding, as it as it were. Yeah, absolutely, John. <laughs> I love to talk about the technology. It's uh, and, and, and mostly because it's really easy to understand the fundamental benefits. You know, essentially, we're bringing the power and um, benefits of MRI, you know, MR imaging into the lung space. Um, that's not been done before. And that's really exciting to me and drives me. So people may know, they, they actually may not know today, you know, I've, I've been doing work in MR, you know, in, in my undergrad and graduate studies, but, and then in my complete career, but they may not know that MR uh, is not used um, today routinely uh, in the lungs. Um, and it's really because MRI is based on water. It's imaging water. And there's not a lot of water in the lungs. Um, that is where our technology with the special xenon gas comes in, right? It lights up in the MR image, whether it's in the airways of the lung or it's going through the lungs into the bloodstream. And this all happens basically within a single 10 second breath hold, which is vastly different than most people are familiar with. So people that are familiar with MR, they may think of like, you know, being in the MR for like 45 minutes to an hour. With us, it's 10 seconds. So importantly, this safe and non-radioactive xenon gas that we use travels the exact same path as oxygen, right? So which provides clinicians with data and a picture to see what they haven't actually ever seen before. So our first application, we talked about it, which is called ventilation, or really the ability for clinicians to quantify and see where in the airways is either getting oxygen or not getting oxygen. So most people understand like this is, uh, particularly important to patients with maybe like severe asthma, COPD, or cystic fibrosis, where you're getting that blockage within the lungs. But let's take a let's take a totally different example and uh, something unique like a lung transplant. So, someone who has diminishing capacity with their lungs from say like having COPD for a long time or cystic fibrosis, they may need a transplant. Uh, once and 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 that's typically once they've actually exhausted all of the options. Um, however, today, the potential for lung rejection is about 50%, which is not really great odds, right? And that's really where our technology comes in. That rejection actually starts in the form of inflammation, um, and, it, and, and it, it's what actually prevents the oxygen getting through that small airways, right? It, 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 well, what I was saying is that inflammation actually starts in the small airway, 
and that prevents the oxygen of getting in and transmitting over into the bloodstream. Um, so unfortunately today, normal lung function diagnostics is insensitive and standard of imaging like CT can't see these very small structures or small airways and it can go undetected, you know, to the point where it's too late. However, with our technology, it's more sensitive and can really illuminate the, the hidden disease in these small airways much earlier in order to provide early intervention that could be life-saving for these patients. And there are a number of large pharma companies really focused on new therapeutics for these patients. So getting that early indication of what's going on is really life-changing for these patients. And then, of course, um, I, I won't go into gas exchange here, but obviously um, this brings enormous potential with both what's called interstitial lung disease and cardiopulmonary, uh, cardiopulmonary disease, uh, like, uh, say, for uh, pulmonary hypertension. Yeah, no, absolutely game-changing technology, as, uh, as you've mentioned already. Uh, and as you say, in use in, uh, in, in two live environments uh, right now. So great technology, but obviously the big challenge is getting it in, in, in more more clinical settings yeah. how do you drive take up obviously the reimbursement medicare medicaid helps what else have you got planned to, to really drive uptake yeah so um as i mentioned before like you know the fundamentals are what we call like block and tackling it's really um the who like so targeting the right groups right in this case we've talked about this or i've talked about this you know publicly we're really focused on the the 100 top you know pulmonary academic centers um, and then gaining access within those centers to the right physicians. Um, so that's sort of the who. Then there's the what and the why, which is really educating them on the technology and why they should believe us, right? Uh, and when we have this momentum, this is where we shift to a financial discussion. Uh, and in this case, really, when we're talking about putting in new imaging technology, it's with radiology, and they look at uh, what's called like a return on investment calculation, right? And that is really supported uh, with our strong procedure economics. So when we got our our um, our, our code and the you know came up and running in October, that was huge. It really changed a lot of the discussions for us. Um, and you know that Medicare reimbursement, it's, it's really it's 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 great. And what we've actually been able to do in the recent months is we've been validating the payment of that at our two centers, which is great. So we have that now validation not only in Medicare, but we've also validated in a few cases in private pay patients, which are the patients that are less than 65. So that's all fantastic news. You know, along the way, and I've said this a few times as well, each center has its own process and its own story. And we key in on those individual, you know, limitations that may arise. And, uh, you know, sometimes we can have a positive impact to accelerate the process. Uh, for example, on the first de novo center that I talked about earlier, right, that we announced in December, um, it was the timing of their budget in the process, which was really the limitation there. And we were able to work with an external financial partner to sort of bridge that gap. So we're always looking at ways to accelerate this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and I guess another way that you can accelerate, you know, your, your, the take out that <clears throat> the routes to market is, as you've already alluded to, partnerships. You've already been working with Philips. There must be a, a lot more out there that you can go after. Yeah, I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up. Partnerships are so important to a young company, right? Um, the, you know, they help us in many, many different ways. Uh, obviously, they offer, you know, validation, um, credibility, and reach, right? This mm -hmm. is, you know, why the Phillips, I would say, the partnership was just such a significant milestone for the company um, early on. Um, they further offer us basically access, right? Clinicians and administrators know Phillips. They may not know Polarian in these early days, right? This is a huge help for us. But more importantly, Phillips knows the customers, right? Um, yesterday, in fact, I was on a call with a brand new opportunity with Phillips, right? We were addressing, you know, uh, we basically were presenting together to one of their key customers. And that is such a huge help. You know, all of this allows us to accelerate the process and really keep our OPEX down, which as a small company, obviously is really important in these early days. Uh, I'm so proud of the progress that we we made with uh, uh, Philips thus far and really excited for the future, what it will bring. But as you mentioned, right, we're talking to um, other key potential partners and um, it's really a central component of our, of our five pillars. 
Make, makes a lot of sense to do that, you know, you, you, the, the gatekeepers, I guess, of, of the industry, uh, as it yeah. were. Um, you know, fantastic plans, fantastic vision, fantastic technology. Um, to get to get this, you know, potential unlocked, you, you, you're raising additional capital. Talk us through the finance, financing needs um, to, to, to really unlock that potential uh, and tell us where you, you expect that to get you in terms of, you know, the, the, the commercials, the finance, the financials that, uh, that we can expect in the years ahead. Yeah, sure. So I think that we obviously put it into that strategic update that just got launched, right? You know, we planned to launch a financing sometime in Q2. Um, I think it was noted uh, in the in the RNS that we put out as well that we've been able to extend our runway considerably, which has offered us some flexibility in the timing, which was great. I mean, that's one of the things I typically bring in uh, uh, when I'm coming into new companies because I know how hard it is uh, to raise money and we need to actually spend the money on value. So I've been working really closely with my CFO, Chuck, on that, and it's been great. Um, but the focus of the fundraiser is to bring in, you know, basically the necessary funds to expand our U.S. commercialization efforts of the existing product, right, with ventilation. And really, while preparing us for our future indication expansion into what we call gas exchange, right, that I mentioned, obviously, before earlier. I, I think I want to be clear also that we are so laser focused right now in the U.S. market. Um, and this is really because um, that is where the approval is. And combined with our great, you know, financial story that we have with customers with this new reimbursement code uh, and focusing in a small company is just so vital, right? To make sure you're putting money where you're going to have the greatest return. That being said, like outside the U.S. market, places like the U.K. or, you know, even, you know, all of Europe could come from a potential partnership. So, you know, this, I guess, all being said, I'm, I'm truly enthusiastic uh, that both new chem isotopes and Bracco understand the opportunity that we have in front of us and have a shared vision for Polarian. Um, and I would say that their continued support, commitment, and trust are both significant and validating to other potential investors. Indeed. Um, yeah, as, as I mentioned, Chris, an extraordinary uh, eight months of progress since you uh, you took the hot seat, um, taking this this uh, incredible product through to, uh, to to commercial success and uh, and more importantly of all, saving patient lives. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Thanks so much, John. Appreciate the time.